How about another big hand for the superintendent? Thank you again. All right, now, if, Mike, do you mind if we just roll through our agenda real quick and then we'll come back to you? Okay, we're going to go into our agenda real quick. Um, our website, our webmaster is in the back there. He's getting ready to play softball, Al Torres. Uh, we have a brand new site. He updated it. It's fantastic. Make sure you go to it. It's GarfieldRidgeNW.com. You can do a lot of different things on there. There's a lot of links. Please go and, and check it out. I'm going to let the alderman speak right now. Um, how about a big hand for our biggest supporter, 23rd Ward Alderman Mike Zalewski. Thank you, Al. So because the superintendent was out tonight, I'll be brief um, and give you a quick update on some things that Al talked about, so excuse my back. Um, when, when I heard that I was invited out and we tried to get the superintendent out just to finish up on him, I did tell him, I said, you know, every time they show a map in these newspapers about the shootings and the killings, there's a big blank spot out on the southwest side, which is great. Um, but we can't forget about our area. Um, and I said this when I introduced the superintendent, we have a lot of men and women that live out here from the police department, the fire department, and that, that automatically gives us a sense of security because, believe it or not, people know where they live, they know the police or firemen live on the block and the firemen and women. So, you know, because of that, we have a, a built-in security net. But because we don't have the shootings, doesn't mean we don't, we, are, we talked a little bit about gangs and garage break-ins and graffiti, so we have to be mindful and, and a lot of that's my job and people like you that help us out, that's why we have a, a safe community. Um, so. Because it's been quiet and the crime is down, you know, it's, it's important that we try and look at taking our community to the next level. And I've been pushed a little bit uh, by some of the people here in the audience tonight. Uh, I was called by Elisa, it's Elisa, right? And asked if, if we could start looking at rejuvenating the business community and Archer Avenue and 63rd Street. So. Lisa and Rich and Gail and Tim came in and we talked uh, about why we don't see the corner bakeries of the world or the Francescas coming here on Archer Avenue. And I tried, I tried to explain that we tried to put a group together of big money developers and, and restaurateurs a while back, but now it sparked my interest to do that again. So we invited everyone back on a Saturday at Homer and Pizza, and we invited out some experts um, that do this for a living. We also had some local business leaders, uh, John from European Chalet and uh, Zeke Flores from that whole complex at Archer and Cicero, and uh, the gentleman that owns the uh, shopping center at Archer and Central, uh, Patel. I forget his first name, but. Uh, Anyway, his dad owns the, the shopping center at Archer and Central. And I said, not Paul, it's his son. I forget his son's name. Um, but we talked about trying to attract these businesses and, and what it would take to do that. Uh, because you're not going to get a corner bakery to move into a closed down barber shop on Archer Avenue. It's just not going to happen. These, these corporations look for big corners on by a traffic light where they can have parking. And if you really look up, up and down Archer, there's not a lot of those corners and spots available. You have Archer and Narragansett, both corners that um, are available. And we can go into you know how much they cost and, and, and what what's what's being planned there. Where the old bank is at, the gentleman that finally that owns it finally wants to put a daycare center there, a two story daycare for kids because he owns the daycare on Archer now. Uh, kids colony and every week he has to turn away about 15 families for daycare so because he is in the business and owns six kids colonies he's going to take that corner and, and turn it into a, a two-level daycare it's actually not my ward anymore believe it or not that's not the 23rd ward just to show you a quick picture checkers is still interested in the other corner on the southwest corner of Archer Narragansett. The only the only hiccup with checkers is is 
where they want to come out. They want to be able to come in off of Archer, right there at the driveway, and either go out onto Narragansett, but they also want to do the, the U-turn and then come out on Archer and turn be able to turn left, which would be a nightmare. Uh, so if we can get them to agree to put the right turn only lanes in the when you can pull out there, uh, they'll come in. So Checkers is interested. But you know, you've got big pieces of property on Archer, but some of the owners don't want to sell. And I'm not picking on anybody, but it's like the Adams Furniture. I've had four or five people come in and say, I'll, I'll buy the whole block and put some, that, something nice there, but those folks don't want to sell. And, and I, you know, that's fine, but I don't know how many refrigerators and stoves they sell anymore, to be honest with you, compared to so many big grocery stores out there. So we're in the process now, the group that I met with, uh, and we're, we're going to market our community to, to a restaurant convention that's going to come down to um, Navy Pier in September. And we're going to try and put a little pamphlet together that shows who lives out here and, you know, what type of people live in Garfield Ridge and clearing. Um, because I hear it all the time. If I take my wife out to dinner and we're out on LaGrange Road or in Burr Ridge or Capri or somewhere, I have people in the restaurant, hey, Alderman, how you doing? You know, I'd like to get one of these out by us. So uh, I'd like to get that. And, I, and it, I appreciate the folks that came in to see me to, you know, help us get that, get that done. You know, the 23rd Ward, is, as Al mentioned, uh, when Alderman Burke came out, it's a different ward now. Um, I didn't vote for the map. I'll say that publicly. I, it, it happened, and, and that's the way it is. But my ward goes all the way to Kedzie now. So I go from 57th to 67th from, you know, all the way to Kedzie. So I have a small part of Garfield Ridge and Clearing. You know, this, this area is still in my ward, but, you know, I have to work with Quinn, Alderman Quinn and Alderman Burke, and we work very closely together, but... You know, that's fine. The politicians can work together, but groups like this really uh, are what help keep our neighborhoods so good and so safe and people that are willing to put out time out of their, their personal lives because they care about our area. And, that, and that's why it was important for the superintendent to come out and say thank you to everybody. So, uh, you know, just a quick, uh, couple quick updates also. Uh, we have about, and Kathy knows this, we have about $400,000 going into Stars and Stripes Park. We're going to have all new playground equipment put in that little park, so that park will be finished. My one other big goal, um, and I'm going to talk to the mayor about it on Wednesday when I talk to him about our development of businesses, is an addition for Burns School. Uh, every other school on the southwest side now has an addition. Hale's got theirs being built as we speak, but whatever happens with casinos or whatever happens with Midway Airport, and that hasn't been determined yet for Midway, the only way I support that is if we get our addition at Burns School. And I've told that to the new principal, Noel. Um, he's also asked me to pay for, uh, which I'm about 98% sure, I told him that today, that we'll be able to do. They have playground equipment out there, but it's got wood chips and hard surface, so we're, I'm going to pay for the soft surface for the playground. And I'm also going to put up signs around that park on the north end of Burns School because a lot of people use that as a dog park and there's a lot of dog droppings that the kids are carrying into school. So we're putting up signs out there tomorrow that reminds everybody that it's against the law not to clean up after your dog. We shouldn't have to do that, but unfortunately it happens a lot. It happens over at St. Rene a lot too. I just met with Father Tom about that and uh, we're putting the same signs up <coughs> around St. Rene. Okay? Um, so now I'll be more than happy to take a couple questions. It's already getting to be 8.30. I'm sure you folks uh, had a long day. Yes, ma'am. Is there anything more about uh, Kennedy uh, this year in the fall will be what they call an international baccalaureate school. So that's going to attract some of the best and brightest kids uh, at Kennedy. The kids from this area will still be able to go there. But if you're in the international baccalaureate program, if you've, if you've been in that program at Kennedy for three years, when you graduate, you already have one year of college credit. So you're going to see some of the best teachers trying to come into Kennedy now and, and a lot of kids uh, that are normally have to go to gifted schools and some of these other magnet schools across the city, they'll be they'll be trying to get into Kennedy now. Yes, ma'am.
there's no doubt that a, a Starbucks uh, will, they, they elevate the community because you have uh, kids your age and, and my age that'll go there and, and spend money. And, uh, the Zeke Flores from Archer and Cicero, they, where the Brandies was at, now that's still in the 23rd Ward, it's not really, you know, right out here, but I met out there with him, and if we can get the CTA to move the turnaround right next to the old Brandies, down at, up to Archer and uh, LeClaire, they've already have Corner Bakery and Starbucks under contract. So uh, now it's just up to me to get the CTA to agree, and I think, we'll, I think we're gonna be able to do that. You know, out here, there's a few other spots where, at one point, Starbucks wanted like four spots out, including where the car wash is going on 53rd and Cicero. They were dying to get that old Arby's. Uh, but then the economy went south and they lost interest. Now their economy's coming back and their interest is back. So I'm gonna keep working with them. But right now, Archer and Cicero for sure is Corner Bakery. Right. Don't tell that to Weber's. <laughs> Don't tell that to Weber's. <laughs> Believe it or not, at least when, when we said that Checkers was interested at whether it was the Chamber of Commerce meeting or one of the CAPS meetings or a senior group, I had people call me and say, we don't want Checkers out here. Okay, so, you know, you're, it's tough. You're not going to make everybody happy. Uh, it would occupy an, an empty corner, but I know that's not really what we want to see. We want, like to see some nice sit-down restaurants. But what I said at the meeting was, and that I said this on, a, on that Saturday morning meeting. I'm very lucky, my, my parents are still alive. My dad's 91, my mother's 89. But if I take my wife out to a restaurant on the Grange Road and I have a glass of wine, she doesn't really drink anything, but if we order dinner and maybe split a dessert, you know, the bill comes, it's gonna be 65, 70 bucks. My parents aren't gonna spend that on a, on a meal, on a regular basis. They may do it once in a great while, but they're still gonna be at, at Peaches and Pears and, and Three Sons because you know, that's that's what they it's close by and that's what they enjoy so we need to track the corner bakeries and the other restaurants we talked about but you know we still have a huge senior population out here that we have to make sure that when these companies come out here that's why we have to mark I have to market our area there's so many people in this group that go out to these restaurants and uh, and, and, and we'll spend the money instead of going out to LaGrange or, or Blue Ridge any other questions Okay, well, thank you for having me. It's always an honor to be in front of you, and thank you for what you do for our community. It was the alderman that got the superintendent out here tonight, so Mike, thanks again for that. That was huge. Okay, we have 10 pies donated by Fasano Pie, and we're going to give them away to 10 people tonight. So, Bernadine Bazzelli, come on up. Peg. Ford Forte, Peg, come on up, Peg. <laughs> Marilyn Kapriniak, Jimmy, Jimmy's bringing him out from the refrigerator. We've had him on ice all, all yeah, meeting. Hey, uh, where's Fas Fasano making him at, Tim? He's out in the western suburb. We got to get him back here. <laughs> Gary S., Gary Sandoval, come on up. Donna Gazikowski, come on up, Donna. Tim Lachonic, Tim, come on up. Ron Sicone. Pat Clark. Bob Dunai. And the last pie goes to Linda Dunn. All right, Linda. No throwing the pies. All right, we want to thank everybody for coming. I know it ran a little longer, but it was awesome. The superintendent and the aldermen were here. Thank you, guys. Go to our website, members. You can go out anytime, day, night, ride, walk, run, anything. Keep your neighbors informed. And you know what? Let's keep everything going well. Great. And what's that? Oh, I forgot. 
Our next meeting is August 19th, Monday night at Wentworth Park. It's going to be outside. We're going to do an outside meeting at Wentworth Park. Okay? Thanks, everybody.